I know many people know Westside Barbell uh, for powerlifting, of course, the strongest gym in the world, by about 140 all-time world records. Right now, you know, there's <clears throat> there's uh, 22 weight classes powerlifting. We hold seven of the total records, and uh, a lot of other world records too. But we'll talk about sprinting. I've worked with a few sprinters, a couple gold medals. Butch Reynolds in the 400, Mo Robbins, a female in the 400. And years ago, um, we've got called George Necklace at Ohio State. He's Big Ten indoor sprint champion. And in the 100, he ran 1047. He wanted to qualify for the Olympic trials, which was 1020. And the high state track coach said George would never run any faster. So I caught him because I had a 7010 shot put right train. Still the record of high state for 30 some years. And uh, we were up here with him. So George came to me in nine weeks, he ran 1017. So I took three tenths off a guy in a high state that the head track coach said couldn't run faster. It's pretty simple, it's just applying physics. Um, 1982, I broke my back the second time, and I knew I was doing something wrong in lifting, but I didn't know what it was. So I started doing all the Soviet methods. Bought every book I could. Right now, a lot of people see my library, it's, it's huge. And um, But after a year of training, I realized what I lacked, science. You guys all get degrees called exercise science degrees. There's no connection between exercise and science in school. None whatsoever. Never bring up any physics or anything. So I want to talk about sprinting, okay? Uh, many, are you, many of you track enthusiasts? Good. Anybody else? All right. <laughs> so feel free to ask questions. First of all, uh, it's called basically how to sprint faster. Uh, what is a sprint? Anyone know? Well, it's to run as fast as possible for a short distance. That's Webster's de the definition of it. It is a max effort. Whoever said that? Yes. Um, and um, so, how do you how do you run fast? You have to become stronger. And too many people run too much, just like football. They run too much, and that's what slows them down. I had a. They gave me a study. A hundred out of uh, two hundred and three football high school combine players who went into the NFL. Um, 157 ran no faster, slow down. The reason was because they do too much running, too much anaerobic tra uh, aerobic training, and affects anaerobic conditioning. There's f in football. There's four plays that go 10 yards. So why they run gassers and all this is beyond me. Has nothing to do with football. Um, um, what basically is what what we're working to do is build strength uh, without gaining muscle mass. Um, Barry Ross refer, for, for, uh, referred this to as a mass specific force. Uh, what is it? It's to maintain low body weight while increasing strength and power. That's what running is, strength and power. <clears throat> running faster comes from stride length, um, the maximum ground force, and minimum ground contact. Uh, for instance, this works for anything. I'm talking about sprinting, but there's studies on a 5K race. Why does strength, strength training helps anything? Everything starts with absolute strength. If you want to gain endurance, you have to become stronger. If you want to bench 100 pounds for the most reps, it helps when you can squat 1,000 pounds and not 120. That all makes sense, right, mathematically. So that's why you want to become stronger. It's to radical degrees, but when doing a 5K race, for instance, um, uh, you can redu if you reduce ground contact by one hundredth of a second per step, and most with a two meter step is twenty five hundred steps in a five k race, you will shorten the time by twenty five seconds. So if you're a track coach, you make a lot of money, or at least keep your job by doing that. This is scientifically proven by more than one study. All right, so um, it can be found in. Uh, have you ever heard of Barry Ross and the underground uh, un un underground secrets of running faster? Have you ever heard this book? I suggest you buy it if you're in the track. 87 pages of very lightning material. <clears throat> it, can anyone tell me what explosive strength is? The definition of explosive strength. Explosive strength uh, is, um, is the ability to uh, uh, rapidly increase force. The steeper the increase of the strength in time, the greater the explosive strength. Now, a lot of people work on power cleans, for instance, and power snatches, and they think they're developing explosive power. They're not. Olympic weightlifting is a speed string sport. Um, weights are not, uh, Olympic weightlifting will not build that. It's just unless you use weights that will uh, produce explosive strength. Those weights are 30 to 40% of a one rep max. So if you curled 100 pounds, you want to be an explosive curler, use 30 and 40 pounds. Explosively as possible.
Strength's not measured. Many people think of strength. Uh, this is what changed my perception of training way back in the early 80s. <clears throat> strength, uh, people look at heavy weights and light weights. You know, years ago, you got a heavy day and a light day. Uh, probably a lot of people still do. We don't. We have a fast day and a slow day. Because strength's measured in velocities. Explosive strength is measured in fast velocity. And that's developed by jumping. Explosive strength is basically defined as jumping. It can be defined as jumping. I, I explain that in a moment. Speed strength, that we do a lot of, if you read my stuff, we use a lot of three weak waves. In other words, if you want to build explosive strength, you'd have a max every day, but 72 hours later, you would train at 30%. For we normally, with that kind of weight, get about 36 lifts. All right, you might do um, 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 six sets of six, all right? It, uh, because uh, with that type of weight, the barbell will not slow down. You cannot have any deceleration whatsoever. Next week, we jump 5%, and the next week, we go to 40 By jumping a small percent, we make a small change for our body to have to adapt, so we never go through the law of accommodation. On the fourth week, we'd either rotate to a different bar and use the same type of weights because a different bar would change the length of our spine. All right? Like it could be a front squat, a safety squat bar, a bow bar. <clears throat> Um, all right, and now speed strength, well, that's what mostly we do for, for, for powerlifting and, and also weightlifting. It, I, I brought, I took this out of, you ever heard of the management of the training of the weightlifter? Um, have you heard of A.S. Primblum? 1982, I started following Primblum's tar charge of loading, uh, reps, sets, and how many per, per workout and so forth. And that changed my total, that changed my total life about lifting. And um, so what we basically do, it, it, um, we, train, we train basically, you can use 75, 80, and 85 percent for um, explosives or for speed string training. All right, with just barbell weight. The problem is with barbell weight, you had deceleration at the top. You're always, the barbell's always going to slow down, so you're going to have deceleration, like it or not. And, um, and we would normally do around, he, he recommends uh, 24 lifts at the 70% and 20 at the 80. So what we normally do, if you did doubles, uh, you, you could do doubles, you could do 12 doubles first week, 12 the second week, 10 the third. Follow that? So the loading, and I gave you guys a loading chart. You see those loading charts? Uh, you see how, um, we'll talk about that in a moment. If Tommy, bring up flat loading for me. I mean, when, let me just ask you about it. Um, okay, but also what we do, we use band tension. And why do we use band tension? A lot of people, accommodation resistance, we all know that, right? But it also has overspeed and centric effects. Faster down, faster up. Anyone that, you, you see a lot of football players lower the bar real slow, then press it up. This makes absolutely no sense. Uh, when you lower barbell slow, eccentrically, eccentric training does two things. It breaks down muscle, that's why bodybuilders do it, and it causes you to get sore. Well, uh, I'm not looking for either one of those things, you know. I want fast eccentrics for explosive strength. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay? All right, so so secondly, what we do is we use 50, 55, 60 with 25% band tension for strength speed training. All right? So you see the 50 uh, with 25% 75, so it's the same thing as Primlitz's chart. And this is based on 780 high-skilled weightlifters from overseas. I didn't bring, I didn't dream this up myself. None of this stuff someone said a while ago, no one did anything, you're damn right. I took this all from the Russians. Breaking my back the second time, I knew there had to be a better way to train, and I better find out, and that was in 1982. I was old then, I'm real old now, so. And, uh, but it kept me on the track and made me top 10 in the world for 33 years. No one's ever done that. And uh, I just got smarter, basically, is what happened. All right, and then for strength speed, that would be all they call strength speed, slow strength. All right, so this is slow velocity. So if you look at Hill's equation of muscle contraction, you can tell me what that is? It's a force velocity curve. Objects in fast velocity produce small force. Objects in heavy velocity, uh, heavy weights and slow velocity produce massive force. Like if I measured this gentleman's strength, I would measure it isometrically. He would pull an isometric bar, that's how you measure absolute strength. Okay? So, but when make things move hard, if you look when a person uh, lets go of a javelin, you know what a javelin weighs, a few ounces, it leaves the hand at th basically 34 meters per second. Shot put, 14. Now our training weights for speed strength, 
is basically around 0.8 meters per second. Between, it goes between 0.7 to 0.9, roughly 0.8 for most people. Where I deal, my gym is a uh, invite-only gym. And right now we've probably got 15 people, 15 real lifters, you know, some fighters and some track people. So it's all your body's going to have the same type body composition, okay, which is very important. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have a gym for, I got a gym for people who come in and try to break world records. That's all I, I don't want anything else. So any questions about any of this? How you measure it? Yes? Just real quick. So for speed strength, we're 50, 55, and 60% plus 25%. So if we were talking 100 pounds squatter, he'd have a 60 pound bar weight. 25% band tension at the top. Right, so equate to 85% at the top. And um, a gentleman asked me years ago, he had 832 deadlift, super exposed, the name is uh, well, Chester, uh, John Stafford. And John was six foot tall with absolutely no athletic ability at all. But he could jump up and touch 11.6 on the wall, six foot tall. That's how explosive he was. He'd jump on a, 30 in, a 36 inch box of 70 pound dumbbells for five sets of five. All right, so that's where he got his explosive power from. And um, so that, that's what you're looking at. See, that's how we build explosive strength. And so see, you, you know, you ever look at, why do we train with these three weights? Because I, I'm either at the 30 to 40 for explosive strength or at a 50 to 60 with the bands for speed strength, right? Because I'm trying to achieve one type of strength, either explosive or speed, on the other day's max effort, which we'll get into a shock training. All right, you look at your car. Everyone, when you leave, will want you to look at your car. When you drive it down the street to tack on her, you know, if you got a race car, you're going to shift to eight grand or something, but it's going to go up to 2,500 and shift. 25 and shift. Why? Optimal horsepower. So there does no need, if you're trying to build speed strength, why do you use weights that's not going to be build speed strength? You know, everyone in America has used Western periodization. We go eights and, you know, 10s and 8s and 6s. It's completely a waste of time. It is not a training system. It's a detraining system. Because when you do high reps, you build high purpose muscle mass. Then you jump into some lighter weights and the bar moves somewhat faster for, for, for power training. But unfortunately, in two weeks, you start to lose your muscle mass. So then when you go into the heavyweights, the lower reps, the threes, the twos, and the ones they talk about, um, you become stronger. Now, the problem now is you've lost your base of training. You don't have a base. I mean, you want to be a 12-round fighter, you can't train for six-round fights. you got to train for 12-round fights. So it, can we look at this chart for just one moment, and we'll get back to this a few times. If, you, if we just look at anything, let's say we'll just say the majority of your athletes can squat 500 if you look in the middle. So see, you look at the, the chart, 50, 55, 60, like I talk about. And, uh, I, and, and um, you know, so the weights are there, um, 250, 275, and 300. It's all the same. The volume is 600 pounds. So if I got a team, and, and, and this is uh, not this uncommon overseas, a lot of sports teams use the same weight periodization that I do. Bec and why, for speed skaters or ball players, you said you're a baseball coach, I'm right? Well, if you want your ball players, we'll just say the 500, hypothetically. All you got to do is have them do these weights all year long. And it was mentioned a while ago by the coach over there, force equals mass times acceleration. You can achieve, you might only be able to squat 500 pounds one time. But if a maximum acceleration is basically with bands, you can achieve a 500 pounds rate of force production. So why you max out at 500 for one, I'm getting 24 exertions of 500 pounds of force production. There's no, that's why we have 83 people. Uh, you have to squat 800 to be a member of my gym. We've had 83. 83. You have the greatest squatter in the world, 1210 at 275, 271. He had collapsed, his name's Dave Hoff, greatest powerlifter in the world of all time. Coefficient ladies, well, biggest total. At 3,005 at 271. He, had, he had, uh, collapsed um, Chuck Vogelpohl's 1180 at 264 body weight. And all right, now on the other side, we have the greatest female squatter, Laura Phelps, 775 at 165. So this works. This, this can't be, is this, is this a joke? Is it luck or is it a system? It's a system.